Good morning. As Murat said, uh, the conference has become the largest uh, conference of the steel industry. I have the honor of being with you in the occasion of the 11th conference with you. Actually, the conference is really uh, the largest, not only in Turkey, but also in the region because of its the high level of participation and attendance. And it's really the only conference with this high level of distinguished attendance. I first will be presenting you some data, and then we'll finish with a general assessment as to what we have been going through since last year and what the expectations can be for the next years. You, uh, as you know, for long uh, years we've, we've argued and complained about the capacity surplus in the steel industry, but you uh, also, as you have also appreciated, there is a stagnation in the capacity in recent years. This resulted from the stagnation in China, mostly, but at the same time, the same has been through globally. Uh, speaking from the perspective of capacity, we can say that in the world uh, market, uh, there is a gap that we've been experiencing in the world capacity and demand. And uh, after 2008, this capacity surplus has uh, just gone beyond 700 million tons. Now, from our perspective, uh, it started earlier. I mean, uh, roughly speaking, about 2011. Every year, uh, the, the uh, Turkish steel industry had to go through a stagnation following a very fast growth uh, in precedence of 2011. In, uh, as of 2011, uh, we've experienced a stagnation at the level of 49 to 50 million tons, particularly resulting from the capacity surplus in the global markets. It's not about the uh, narrow down of the Turkish market. Just on the contrary, in that time, there was an increase in our consumption. The speaking of 2015, there was an increase of 12 percent. Now, the capacity surplus was experienced not only in China, but also in other countries, particularly in the neighboring countries of Turkey. In Ukraine, uh, the 39 million tons out of 43 million tons of a capacity corresponded to a capacity surplus. Only 10 percent of the capacity could be consumed. Therefore, in Russia, for instance, there is almost a 50 percent redundancy. Uh, in other countries, particularly in Iran, we've been speaking about a capacity redundancy. Uh, now, the situation is not as easy at, as it was in the past, in the traditional markets particularly. Speaking about a reverse uh, situation between uh, consumption and production, as uh, the uh, consumption rapidly increased, the 36 million tons of uh, production from 2012 dropped down to two, uh, 32 million tons after a slight increase in 2015. But nevertheless, uh, that, that 36 million level that that we reached in 2012 is not even possible at this level. The reverse picture also uh, appears in uh, imports and exports. Uh, the tw more than, I mean, uh, 20 million plus level was achieved in 2011. And speaking about roughly a 13 million level of exports, but imports has uh, just gone uh, from 11 million tons uh, down under 10 million. Uh, particularly speaking about the recent decline in uh, in. Uh, the last nine months, we have to consider this decline a significant decline. Therefore, uh, we've uh, seen that the decline is almost comparable to that last year. 
Now, there are, of course, some implications of the situation on the Turkish steel industry, speaking about the entire steel products. We've been importing mostly from Russia, and we can speak about 4.3 million tons of an import uh, with 22% uh, share. China comes after Russia, and uh, we can see that China uh, declined from more than 4 million to uh, 2.9 million. It seems that the same level is preserved for this year, but probably within the year there will be a significant decline in the uh, imports from China because uh, the current situation uh, has taken China probably out of an, uh, an exporter country. There is one thing that is peculiar here. Uh, the, the two countries that do not have any significance for Turkey. South Korea uh, had reached a level of 1 million tons last year, and Brazil, again, roughly 1 uh, million tons. Therefore, there is a verification of the uh, sources now. The classical Russia, Ukraine, China now has expanded its scope with Brazil and South Korea. Rom Romania uh, and France still remain significant import. Uh, sources still. Now, when we take a look at the share of uh, imports in the steel consumption, you can see that this has been on the rise. Uh, actually, uh, this is not something acceptable for a country that has a, a redundant capacity in many countries of the world. People are reacting against this and taking measures. Uh, of course, the countries that are leading the, uh, the free market are protecting their steel markets strictly. Now, this is uh, the slide that shows the same trends in Middle East and uh, also in Far East. You can see this is the uh, exports of Tur uh, Turkey, and you can see from 23% down to 15% of a decline. Uh, the share of China also uh, has increased from 10% to 32 to 33%, followed by the other countries countries, CIS countries, for instance, preserving their position. Therefore, uh, there obviously is a decline in our performance. This is something to confess. Of course, there are uh, some protective measures um, that were shaped up with uh, by this uh, recent development, and you can see that the measures Turkey has imposed is more modest compared to the other countries. Under the light of all of these developments, we can see, say that Turkey still ranks amongst the biggest uh, steel exporters. Uh, from position 9 to position 5, we've moved with a big performance. Importing is more attractive for us. I mean, importing as it is and running the business with a uh, contracting uh, is more attractive, obviously, for Turkey. And you can see that we are uh, actually uh, uh, quite uh, easily to uh, supersede Italy and South Korea, and I think that we have to spend the best efforts to be amongst the top three countries, and the policies that are in place are now supporting this perspective. Now, But unfortunately, on the contrary, there is a big regression in our exports. Uh, Turkey, as the net steel exporter, was in the position of the fifth country in 2010. Now, uh, in 2014, we ranked 11, and as of 2015, we're no longer on the list because we're no longer an steel exporter. <laughs> From position 5 down to position 11 uh, in four years, and in, uh, you can see that uh, these are uh, this is the league of the biggest ex uh, steel exporters, and we are at number 14. Uh, probably uh, we will not be in the position of increasing this position in the near future. 
Now, what is the recent situation? Actually, uh, uh, we are just uh, making a production in the arc furnaces, and recently the situation has slightly changed. You can see that there is an increase incredible increase in the price of a coal. Uh, it's at the level of $300, but in the past we had a different situation for the coking coal. And the si same thing applies uh, to ores, uh, ore prices. There is a significant increase in ore prices. Speaking of the prices, of course, uh, we can say that the prices are in parallel to each other, uh, that we do not see uh, you know, a slight shift in the prices. So the price tendency is quite uh, the same. <laughs> So, since 2012, Turkey um, preserved its capacity with a significant decline in its production. And you can uh, see that the consumption, on the contrary, is rising. It's at the level of 37.2%. Uh, so we have a, a reverse trend for production and consumption. And we can say that we have an, a, a decline in our exports from 20 million tons. We've declined from 16.7 and probably will be lower for this year. Uh, speaking of the US dollar figures, we are speaking about the uh, declines. Um, so uh, from roughly uh, 20 billion US dollars, we are, are down to 11 billion US dollars in our steel exports. On the contrary, our import uh just uh, declined uh, increased from 11 billion US dollars to 12 billion therefore uh, in addition to the loss of exports and this increase in imports we are speaking about an 11 billion US dollar worth of a net loss. Uh, and of course, uh, we can speak about uh, 90, uh, down to 90, 93% of the export import uh, conversion rates. Now, the figures. figures reflect the situation of the steel industry globally. And uh, in a minute, I will give you a more detailed uh, insight as to the situation in Turkey. But in summary, in 2015, we've experienced a big downswing uh, in Turkey as the uh, sector representatives. Previously, we've had some other downtimes, uh, like in 2009, but it was not as disastrous as uh, this year. In 2009, you would remember that the steel prices increased dramatically, and later on, uh, there was a decline down to 579 US dollars. In a very short time, we have achieved uh, that regression, and the difference in between remained quite uh, higher than uh, the the other industries and the sharp point was 130 and the final product of 1,500 uh, just uh, got down to 370 US dollars. People who had the products in their stock had uh, to go through some difficulties but then there were two differences than what happened last year. Number one is uh, in that process of loss there was also some kind of profit. Therefore, this destruction of the loss could be remedied somehow. Secondly, the situation was quite transient because everything started to recover in just a few months. The normal levels were achieved and the production activities were sustained as such. But the situation last year was a complete disaster because the figures were quite close to the input, input figures and that really sustained for months. Um, uh, China and Russia, Ukraine, uh, also uh, had made their adjustments in the prices leading to about just 50% more than the prices that we applied in Turkey. It was only 25 to 30% of uh, conversion rate for the input costs. This could, I mean, was really impossible. As this was a global situation, many countries, including from United States to Canada, uh, all the countries took measures. 
uh, even that uh, threat of loss was sufficient. Uh, and uh, in Canada, for instance, we attended the meeting about, about the capacity, and we, uh, the people really took some decisions in advance. But in Turkey, we had uh, the wait and see policy in place. Uh, and after everything really uh, happened, we said, OK, if this is the disaster, can we take measures? This is not only for Turkey, but UK also followed that path. And when the steel facilities were shut down in the UK, Minister of Economy uh, just uh, said we are no longer going to allow for this. But it was already too late because the facilities had to stop their activities. So what is important is to take preventive measures before the disease uh, immigrates into all of your cells. But of course, uh, there was a meeting at the OEC. The Chinese minister said, you're complaining, but the users are quite happy with their lives. You're going to maintain this. Maybe things can change until 2020. But the country representatives who were there, including me, really reacted a lot to that, because this is not the way to sustain. You, can ex you cannot accept people to s silently accept everything after you have devastated the sector. Then the Chinese uh, said, let's just think about it and take some measures. And there is a capacity reduction to take place gradually. But there is also a question mark, as we discussed during the meeting, This uh, whether this was a true capacity reduction or um, the capacity to be reduced were uh, to be increased on uh, the parallel, because there were gigantic investments that were uh, still running. But but obviously, we do see that the Chinese are showing some efforts. This is not something that is um, done to compensate for the technological um, uh, aspects, but at the same time, this had implications over an automatic shutdown of uh, the over-the-life facilities. Now, uh, they are just in a different uh, position than in the past, but we'll see that by the end of the period, which is to 2020, whether this will lead to a true uh, capacity reduction, it's still uh, not clear yet because the situation currently is, on one hand, there is a capacity reduction, but on the other, there is a, a capacity that supersedes the existing uh, capacity. Uh, but it's obviously the fact that people, all the countries of the world reacted to China. They tested whether they could apply what they claimed. They're now looking for more reasonable steps to take in the industry, together with the other uh, steel industries globally. We are just watching. Um, there was, uh, especially uh, at, the, uh, at the beginning of the year, there was a price increase which was uh, casual, but uh, this was just uh, implicated over the temporary taxation. Last year, in 2012, China lost a lot of money and suffered a lot of loss, and there were implications that they couldn't meet the new demands. That temporary taxation was quite uh, floating as this demand was withdrawn in a few months. But you would pay attention that the prices are sustaining at a certain level where the steel producers are now taking some breath at least. And uh, the ore producers, coal producers, are extremely relieved uh, because the scrap producers currently are not complaining a lot from the current situation, we have to admit. Uh, therefore, all of the stakeholders who are active in the sector uh, are just at the level of some uh, modest profitability, some more, some less, but we're at the modest profitability level so we can survive in the sector. Although this is not as in the past, it just implicates a development. But we can say that in 2012, we talked with the Ministry of Industry and the other relevant authorities, uh, just saying that Turkish steel industry industry is just producing on the arc furnaces so that uh, you will have to endure the consequences because uh, the ones who are just producing in this basis cannot survive with the arc furnaces because we said that the enterprises with the arc furnaces do have their own uh, logic. And we have Mr. Moamer uh, who uh, made a very nice publication in Steel Orbis. Induction furnaces can sometimes 
provide quite cost-effective solutions. Uh, now, in the past, this was also true for the uh, discussions uh, for the change of the regime, because I was a student at the Faculty of Political Scienti Sciences. Uh, there were, you know, there were uh, people, the uh, students supporting uh, socialism, and the others supporting so uh, Soviet Union. Some said, uh, you. Uh, cannot provide the solutions in Angola, and the others were arguing that you are putting a lot of pressure over the uh, peoples, but the solution was any solution that would neglect human in its core would be wrong to apply. And the same is true for the systems. Doesn't matter if you give the best technologies, I mean, they may not get good results unless they are properly educated. Uh, there can be, of course, some alternatives to it, but categorically speaking, uh, we cannot say this technological solution has consumed its survival and uh, the only solution that can be cost effective is this would be an imposition neglecting uh, the conditions of the day. So based on the current position, the enterprises, we, uh, if we say that the enterprises, uh, other than those who are just basing its technology on the arc furnaces will not survive, is wrong the same. And uh, although we might argue that those who are producing with this crap is better, but it's just up to the conjuncture. And it's a transition period. It's important to take measures considering the conditions of the market economy because everything will balance off with the conditions of the, uh, the day. And the stagnation that our steel industry has been going through probably will be overcome uh, by taking bigger steps in the coming years. Uh, the most important thing we uh, need is demand, local demand, which is uh, present in Turkey. We have more demand than we can meet, uh, and this local demand uh, is not that high for the import products in any country. Therefore, the stakeholders, I think, should be there to support each other. Every party would consider the position of the other, in which case I think we can meet the local demands by the local local sources, and there I think the most favorable solutions will be there for Turkey. This is so not only for Turkey, but also for uh, Europe, for, uh, for America. And the same, uh, I think, will happen in the coming years. Therefore, I think reasonable profitability will be possible for all stakeholders in the industry. I think we, are ex we should be expecting days where the, uh, the reasonable profitability can be possible. I think the current uh, situation gives us the clue that it's really possible. Thank you very much for your attention. Maybe there are questions for you. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Weysel. And I would like to ask the audience whether they have any question for Dr. Yayan. But first, I would like to ask one question. Now, the conjunctural changes that you've been speaking about are quite to the point. Someday you have the advantage, and the next, the other side will have the advantage. My question is mostly about the structural position of the sector. Now, generally speaking, in developed economies, co uh, consumption of construction steel is one third of the overall steel consumption, but in Turkey, it's up to 70 percent. I think this needs to change. What do you think about this? Uh, what uh, kind of economic policies should we uh, implement uh, to overcome this imbalance? Now, uh, it was roughly 50 percent, but we've just achieved a, an increase in the consumption of steel by the construction sector. Uh, as the in, uh, infrastructure investments speeded up, and of course we had the urban transformation in place, we had the share just increasing a bit. But I think it needs to be corrected within its flow. Uh, of course, this is something to do with the industrial
industrial development of Turkey. I don't know if you've uh, paid attention to it, but in the manufacturing industry, we've uh, experienced the biggest decline ever in this uh, September. And this also was also stated in the article we put in Steel Orbis. And uh, people were just uh, trying to find an answer as to how uh, this big decline could happen in the manufacturing industry. Because, of course, there was a decline uh, in the production of the um, pr relevant products, uh, the, uh, flat products. What needs to be done here is to facilitate investment here at this point. Because to be honest, we do uh, see that uh, we're in the period where people have a cautious perspective for the investments. Uh, this is also uh, both an implication of uh, the attempted coup in July, but also uh, because of the stagnation following uh, this uh, attempted coup. This needs to normalize swiftly. Uh, Turkey has to prove itself that it's an investable country. This, I think, needs to be a message to be conveyed uh, both uh, to domestic investors and to international investors. Because we can maybe save the day with construction only a few years, but there is an end to it. Therefore, swiftly, uh, we need to shift uh, to uh, the uh, position of consuming 60 70 percent of flat products as the developed country is. Therefore, uh, we need to encourage uh, the activities of other sectors who would do that. Uh, it's true that we're going through a downtime currently, but the need, of course, uh, is uh, just also seen by the political authority. And I can uh, fully say that the Ministry of Finance also admitted to go through some uh, stagnation, and it needs to end. There are some measures to be taken. Uh, it's just the authorities who just confer confess this. I mean, it's at least good that people are aware of this problem. So it takes some time to correct it. I don't think there is lack of uh, recognition of the problem, but I think that the problems will be overcome quickly. Thank you. Do we have any further question for Mr. Yayan? Mehmet Saran. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Yayan, for your talk. You, you uh, also referred to the um, increase in the uh, imports. Taking a look at the figures, imports is rather in the semi-finished products. Uh, in, for instance, 2010, 5 million tons of uh, logs were just imported, and slabs also. Uh, to reduce this imports, do you think that the stakeholders in the steel industry can take some measures to compensate uh, for this increase? Uh, it's, I mean, rather than discussing uh, which would be the best way, we also should start with just uh, some categorical debate. Maybe our members are importing, uh, and we never just say that it's impossible. Uh, of course, uh, I mean, being in the position of importing and not importing uh, the uh, slabs, of course, uh, the decline is not something to be very much upset about. But uh, having semi-finished products amongst the items of the import goods, uh, it's rather a debate whether Turkey uh, just uh, will be in the position of uh, just processing the semi-finished goods and will be exporting it to the other products. And of course, uh, there can be some other industries to come into the picture, including the rollers, uh, to uh, take some position. Of course, we are the people and institutions of this country. What we need to do is to create value within the country. Of course, we are spending efforts to be uh, there. And it's just uh, the target to minimize, of course, uh, such imports. From this perspective, uh, we can just uh, see wherever there is an excessive import. For instance, flat products import is just so disturbing for us, because we can speak roughly about 
five, seven, six, seven million tons of imports there, and the capacity was doubled. And for our future projections, we just forecasted that this would be at a neglectable level, down to one to two million tons, uh, and we can use uh, the idle capacity in Turkey. That was actually the tendency, but all of a sudden we've seen that uh, leave aside, I mean, uh, the utilization of the capacity in Turkey, imports reached 8.5 million tons. There is nothing to defend about there, because uh, 250 tons, uh, tons of uh, the um, hot rolled products just were brought to Turkey. I mean, uh, the, the prices were incredible. And this totally are uh, devastating figures for the industry. The entire world reacted against this, and this is the third year, and Turkey is just still looking into it. And when you just make a statement about it, the relevant authorities are reacting to it. When this is the situation, of course, uh, what uh, shall we say? I mean, uh, shall we say that it's good not to react against anything? So we are disturbed about this. Um, uh, so we have to think twice when we are importing. If there is any member who is just doing uh, imports, we have to think twice. But it's not about us or the other unions. But we do consider all the producers in Turkey as the stakeholders. Getting hand in hand, we should be in the position of uh, leaving welfare in Turkey. And I would like to thank all the stakeholders for the efforts they've been showing in this direction. One final question, please. Hello, from Daikin, Alper Yevizoldo. In your talk, you referred, uh, particularly in the aspect of uh, reducing imports, uh, taking some measures which we've been delayed about. Uh, we also consider this as an industrial production because the world has become so competitive that not only amongst the competing countries, but also in terms of the production with the sister factories, we have to compete with each other. Uh, two years ago, uh, we are just speaking about a 15-fold growing investment in Turkey, uh, and we're providing employment in Turkey. Uh, the measures to be taken there, do you think, would have some implications over the flow of employment? In other words, uh, how can we compensate for the negative implications that we'll be experiencing uh, on employment? Steel consumers or the sectors who are uh, producing by consuming steel is not only in Turkey. For instance, in the United States, 500% of, of the protective measures were taken. Taken, they've started to apply dumping tax. Russian Federation applies it as 75%. The EU has some decisions about it. Canada, the same. And in these countries, uh, there are also industries consuming steel. Uh, you would appreciate that the American, the U.S. Uh, manufacturing industry is just a few uh, times bigger than that of Turkey. Of very naturally, they might have some items of cost increase, but I do think that sometimes this is being exaggerated. For instance, if there is a price difference of 30 U.S. dollars per ton, if in every product, uh, if 20 kilograms of flat steel is being consumed, the difference there is just at the level of 20, 10, 15 cents or 30 cents max. Now, uh, the decision of either buy and or sell is not based on 15, 20 cents. You know, particularly in local sales, you can uh, just uh, compensate for this loss. The biggest thing is about balancing this off. For instance, in the United States, the flat products is at the level of 450 US dollars uh, in Turkey, and then in the United States, it was up to 600. Even in the Russian Federation, it was at the level of 550. These are also the countries that are producing and selling their products. In Turkey, because of $250 price, 
uh, import price of the flood products, the final product prices were 350, but in, in Japan it was like uh, 410, 450 US dollars, which is a neighbor country to China, and they're just having all of the industries, including the automotive and the other sectors. So this uh, is thanks to the mechanisms that can compensate for the cent-based losses. Therefore, rather than the actual uh, case, people are rather, I think, ex exaggerating things around the table discussions. And um, it is one thing that we have to, I mean, uh, decide is uh, shall we produce locally or not? I mean, uh, we can buy with the cheapest prices from somewhere. Uh, that was there was a there was a, mi a ministry of economy meeting uh, we attended together with the colleagues who are also present here a sectoral representative says we're really at the bad uh, position because we are uh, just getting the prices from flat product producers but uh, international producers are also clever they're checking the local prices and offering ten dollars lower than this and then I said it's actually a very good position because it means that if we do not uh, give a quotation, uh, you uh, probably will find uh, exporters who will be offering prices who will be more expensive than that of Turkey. I mean, it's just uh, not the discussion whether uh, to compensate for the loss. Uh, I mean, if you see this as an advantage for a $10, uh, for instance, benefit, it will be a short-term solution. Because if we cannot survive, you will have to endure problems in the future. And then when you ask the enterprises in Japan, uh, they would say that they want to buy locally, even if the prices are not clear. Categorically, they decide to buy from China. Korean producers are accustomed to buying from Korea, but we don't have that habit. Sometimes $20, $30 of a lo uh, difference is considered as a big difference. I mean, uh, this probably uh, should not be considered as such. We should be hand in hand, and then we can discuss how, with, how to overcome the loss, how to correct the loss from local or international markets. I think the debate should boil down to this level. One final example is at the Ministry of Industry, um, there is this strategy paper uh, for the metal uh, and iron uh, products. Uh, there was a representative from the Union of Machinery Producers, and he uh, just took the word and said, we know each other. And you buy uh, low quality products just, just for $10, $20, then you impair the image of the sector. We have local producers who can supply quite reliable, high quality to products. Please do not depend yourselves upon these low profile products. And there are, of course, people who uh, endure the low profile uh, products. And there are people who would say, let's just buy it at uh, the low price, doesn't matter to which cost. Uh, because then there will be a very high multiplier effect leading to uh, bigger losses in Turkey. Thank you. Thank you. Let's not just delay the session any further and let's move on to the next uh, speaker.